Ladies and gentlemen, I am 28 years old. And I have been playing chess since I was five and a half. Chess has been my full-time career for over 10 years. Chess has been my full-time online career for a better part of four years now. And you all may know this feeling of having a job and a certain walk of life and not wanting to talk about work once you are off work. Sometimes even thinking about your line of work could just get you upset. Today is one of those days. Today I witnessed something so horrible that I figured the only way to share the negative emotions that I'm currently experiencing is not to try therapy, talk to a friend. It's to share it in a YouTube video. Now, as the kids say, I will stop yapping, and I'm going to show you this game. This is one of the worst things that I have ever seen in my life. It all begins with our protagonist from Brazil, who actually, by complete coincidence, is playing somebody also from Brazil. And I checked, they're not friends. They don't have each other at it. It was just a total coincidence. This is a matchup of two Brazilian players. Their names are Cactus and FLK. We can discuss what FLK stands for. Cactus opens the game with the very powerful pawn to E3. Not a bad move, but generally, if you can, you should move two squares. The move e3 doesn't actually fight that much for the center, although you could argue you are threatening to capture one of the squares. Black, a very principled 400, plays the move d5. Does, in fact, move the pawn two squares. And now, Cactus plays knight to c3. Don't hate that move at all. I mean, you might as well put a knight in the center behind the pawns, right? It's probably the best way to play. It's definitely a good move. All right. Now, after knight to c3, black responds knight to f6. White plays d4. I love this. Now, the reason we see here that this pawn is a little bit bad is that if the players just got to that position without the move e3, if this was the opening, white would now be able to move the bishop outside of the pawn chain. But the way it happens in the game is white goes for the center, but already committed this pawn here. So they will get their bishop out and their knight out, but the other bishop is not really going to get a turn. The other bishop might have to be a little slower. And black does great. Pawn in the center, two knights in the center. And, and you know, at this point, Cactus does what every 400 does, which is realize that they made a small inaccuracy. And then rather than, it, you know, I'll give you an example, okay? We installed some blinds today. You know, the things that go up and down on the window to keep the light out. Well, our blinds were slightly the wrong size. It happens, you know? So I'm going to have to reorder a new size and reinstall it. And for now, I'm just going to have to live with a little bit of sunlight. Well, what 400s do is rather than reordering something, they just blow up the whole house. That's just what... So E4. You know, White did not have to do that. You know, White could have just dealt with the pawn on E3 and very slowly, you know, and, and then prepare. No, White decides, I, you know, E4, I'm going to just lose the pawn. I'm just going to lose the pawn. And I'm going to lose the pawn, and that's going to get my bishop out. And Black says, okay, that was a stupid move. Now Black is just a pawn up. Look, if you're playing a chess game and your four moves into it, you're just down a pawn. You either played a gambit or you have no idea how to play chess, Okay. Now, again, with this move, every time a pawn, a pawn or any piece moves in chess, you got to see how it affects the position. Right now, black has an attack over here. So a good move by white is pinning the knight to the king or defending the pawn or going here and losing another pawn. So now you've lost one pawn and you're probably going to lose a second pawn. You're just two pawns down for absolutely no reason. And then after you take that, you're probably going to hang this third pawn and a rook. But instead of that, again, we're playing two 400s. This opens up, but black plays bishop f5 instead of taking the pawn. Bishop f5, completely reasonable move, overprotecting the pawn in the center. And now white does, in fact, realize it is under attack. And white can push, white can protect it, white can protect it like this. But why do any of those things? Because white just goes bishop g5, just losing the pawn again. No problem. But at least 
White is getting all their pieces out and has not played the move knight to f3. Because then you would just lose the knight, right? Black, by the way, excellent. Excellent. Not worried about the pin, opening up the dark squared bishop. I love this. Very principled chess from one of the parties. Uh, not both. But, you know, again, it's, a, it's like adapting to, it's adapting to the situation. So at this point, white can play queen up and castle queenside. White can play knight to e2 or castle this way. Or white can develop the knight like this. It's not a good move, right? Knight to h3 is not a good move because black can always take and open up your king. You generally want to avoid as much as possible, unless absolutely necessary, to develop your pieces out to the edge. Even to the center, like this would have been better. And black, very principled, finishes up the development and does that. Now, good rule of thumb for beginners. If you are pinned bishop, knight, queen, I, I, I would just play simple. I would just block the pin so that enables the movement of your knight. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with bishop to b4. Another rule of, you know, just a small thing for, for beginners. If you ever get pinned, I would just attack the bishop. Just, the thing is, if bishop goes back, nothing really changes. But you have the option to play g5 and kick the bishop out completely. But most people will take because they're beginners and they don't know how to play chess. And, you know, now, if you notice, the advantage here is minus 1. And then after the trade, it's nearly minus 2. It's minus 1.7, minus 1.8. So bishop to b4, don't hate it. White plays a3. By the way, I just said attack the bishop and see what happens. And, and black took. Because again, beginners oftentimes, when they move the bishop out there, they're going to take the knight. At like 8 times out of 10. Now, unfortunately, black cannot take the pawn on d4. One other thing to keep in mind, this is way beyond this level. But if the dark squared bishop was traded, you generally want to replace your pawns on dark squares. Black does not have that. Black has 5 out of 8 pawns on light squares, although it is, you know, 5-3 is a pretty good balance. The dark squares could potentially become weak, but that's above this level in black castles. Black has played an absolutely perfect opening. Absolutely perfect. White now plays queen e2. I don't know why white is not castling. And that's also not under attack whatsoever, right? But it's life. Okay. Now, we've entered the hardest part of a chess game, which is the middle game. You could say it's end games, but you can't even make it to an end game if you have diarrhea in the middle game. So it's not going to happen, right? So we've entered the hardest part of the game. And, you know, it takes a lifetime to learn how to play middle games even half decently or a quarter decently. Uh, and, uh, yeah, let's, you know, every middle game is played with pawns and pieces and, pawn and peace trades and creating weaknesses and creating attacks. And, you know, right now, if I'm playing with black, I, I might attack the center. Because I want to get my knight over here. You know, I'm, again, this is a bit annoying, so I may attack the bishop. I'm actually not going to take this if I'm playing black now. Because even though the structure is bad, the king's not over here. If the king was over there, that would be good. But white will play rook g1 and suddenly have good attacking chances. So black plays a6. I mean, listen, if you're 400 and you're not blundering any pieces, I don't care what type of plan you're making. I'm not going to judge you. It, it, every move that you make as a 400 not blundering something is a win in my book. And now white plays long castles. So white decides that rather than, you know, I don't know, white might be a genius. White might, was like, well, if I go here, they're going to just open up my king. I don't want that. And instead castles queenside. Let me tell you something. You bought a house with no roof. I mean, you are now fully responsible for getting construction done. And you should have done the construction before you moved in the house. You moved in the house, you got no roof. All right. And what I would play here with black is right away. Ju just go right after that weakness. King to b2, get my knight over there, get my other knight over there, and just start pawn storming. I mean, that is exactly, and by the way, b5 was the idea behind a6, and now plays directly into the hands, right? So, again, white just castle queenside, black plays b5, what do you do here with white? Well, you obviously slide the bishop back, black might, you know, play, continue the attack somehow, and then you have to attack over here, and it's going to be chaos. Instead of that... After the move b5, white does something so confusing. Um, white is already a pawn down, and obviously is, it's worse than that. It's minus 1.6. And, you know, white is down a pawn, and white also has a very weak king. These pawns are very weak, right? So it may surprise you that in this position, white just decides to make their situation even worse and sacrifices the bishop? Why? Not only do you sacrifice the bishop, you, you just opened up the whole board. Now, you know, again, I think White did this, and White's thought was, well, if I give up the bishop, I get two pawns, and then I'm going to take, and I'm really smart. 
But you have to, like, you cannot end your thought at that's my last move and next move I'm taking this. What is there, like an amoeba on the other side? Like a caterpillar? I mean, there's a human, hopefully. Like, they're gonna defend the night, I don't understand. And, and we just opened up all of this. Well, it turns out that I'm a moron, and it turns out that this 400 knows everything, because Black went here and hung the knight. So, it actually turns out that at 400, when you sack a bishop for two pawns opening up your own king and a minus five advantage, the knight is just included. It's like, buy one, get one free. Okay, you bought, boom, you just take the knight as well. Now, white is no longer as bad as it was, and also white goes from two points down to a point up. Now, you may wonder, well, why is white not better? Why is it minus 1.92? It's because white is, like, wide open. I mean, the king is spread eagle. Like, there is... King has no roof. White is still in a lot of trouble. But white is only in trouble if black knows what they're doing, okay? And that's a very important point to make, okay? Um, and in this position, black plays e5. And clearly, black does not understand the situation because you need to look at the entire board. And the move e5, not only does it lose a pawn, it, it, the situation gets a whole lot worse here because now the queen is hanging and the knight is hanging. And the only reason it's not completely lost, again, it's like it's 0.44, but it's 0.44 at the 400 level, which means it's 9.4. Because the only move here is queen e7, losing the knight, creating an attack on the king, and maybe surviving. Yeah, none of that happens. Black plays bishop d7, okay? So now it's plus four for white, okay? Bishop d7 attacks the queen. The knight is hanging. You can't really take it because then you lose your queen. Yeah, you could get that one back, but then... Anyway, the best move here is obviously to just move the queen. Just queen a6, queen c5, queen c4. One of these moves. The engine likes queen c5 the most because if you play queen c4, there is queen e7. So... Bishop d7, queen c5 stops queen e7, and then you're going to take the knight, then you're going to take the bishop, and you're going to feast on the black position. So black plays bishop to d7. And yeah, of course, I mean, e5 is a horrific move. Pawn takes e5, white is now up two points, and is about to be up a whole lot more. Um, or maybe they're not, because in this position, they just give up the queen completely. Like, the bishop went there, blocking the attack on the queen... And white went knight to f4. Losing the queen, when I say for absolutely nothing, I am not exaggerating. That is literally a completely free queen. Now you're going to sit there and go, no, Levy, not quite. Rook takes d8. You're right. You're right. And that's what happened. Rook takes, and you're going to get the knight, and then black will go here, and it's still game on. It's still game on. Yes. But obviously, we did not have to play knight f4, but I guess, you know, white thought that they were sneaky. So black takes the queen, and white goes here. Now, that don't make no sense. That doesn't make any sense. So one of two things happened here, okay? One of two things happened. White either forgot that the rook could take the queen because they were so devastated they blundered. Or white never had any idea in the first place. Like, imagine living in a universe where you just never saw this could even happen, right? Black went here, so obviously you never, like, you never even saw that, so why would you, right? And so then you hung your queen. Now, what, what really boggles my mind here, though, th this is definitely, and, and a lot of you are going to understand what I'm talking about here. When you lose a piece, right, you get mad. Generally, when you lose a big piece of material, you get mad. Or when your opponent captures something, we have chimpanzee brain. So when our opponent, like, like we're not that different, okay, from the great apes of the world. When the queen is taken, you go, ooh, I gotta take something too, ha! Like, we're not complicated, okay? We got opposable thumbs and mental health problems, but other than that, I mean, we are all just, you know, we're not that different. But for some reason, white didn't do either. White just straight up, I'm not even, white lost a queen for nothing and went here. And black moved the queen. That's not the best move. The best move again was to go queen e7 and attack. But black was like, oh my God, I, got, I can't believe I got out of there. Like, it's like a bank robbery. I mean, I went queen c8. Pawn takes f6. Now, if you're playing with black here, what you want to do 
It's a little tough, you know, you could take, but then you gotta be really careful. In, in chess, the two most important things are material and king safety. So in this position, white is actually two moves away from checkmating black. I'm not saying it's forced, but like, for example, if white plays knight to d5, they are literally threatening a checkmate. That's mate. So bishop takes, rook takes, this is checkmate. Like, you need to protect your king. You must, at all costs. You must protect your king. So you could lose the game. Look at this. You could just lose the game like that. Boom. So it's never really over, okay? And black plays queen b7. And black is looking for very, very naughty things. Very bad, right? All they have to do is prevent the king from escaping. Maybe rook d8, right? So pawn takes g7. And um, again, black clearly realizes the rook is hanging. Of course, black can just take back. But listen, they got to justify their plan. They play queen to b2, b2 check. The king is now forced out into the center. And, um, you know, you see the rook is hanging, right? You might as well take the pawn. That's that's probably what I would do, but that's an umbrella pawn. It's a pawn you can hide behind, so maybe it's not the end of the world. And black plays rook fd8. Um, at this point, neither player realizes that rook bishop takes is possible. You just get the bishop for the rook. What's crazy is that the engine, the computer says losing the rook is the best move because... Actually, Black's attack is now unstoppable. As I always say, when the evaluation is a BMW, it's really, really bad. So the king goes to anywhere. This is a check. The king goes here. Bishop b5. There are no legal king moves. Now you have to lose all your pieces. And when it's all said and done, you get mated. Which is actually why rook to d8 is the best move. Now, white, by complete accident, 100% accident, plays king to e2. Does not take the rook does not even see it, and now actually has two things staring at the rook, which you gotta be very careful about. Now, if I'm playing with black, I'm just trading. I'm trading, and I'm gonna try to take as many pawns as I can, trade the rooks, and get rid of this pawn. Black plays queen b5 check. What a move, by the way. Backwards queen move, beautiful move, sniping the king and the bishop. Listen, white missed the boat, they couldn't take the rook with the bishop, now they're gonna lose the bishop. I mean, black has played a fantastic game. Other than like e5, excellent. What a move by black. Good idea by white. Pretty hopeless, but you, you might as well send a pawn out to die. And here, black actually shows that they had absolutely no idea that the bishop was hanging. Like, queen g5, they did not see whatsoever. But instead, they take this, and it's actually the best move. Like, that's the thing. Sometimes in chess, instead of playing the move that's minus 9, you play the move that's m7. It's mate in 7 moves. Now, there is literally negative chance that black sees it. And if they do see it, they should be banned from chess.com, but... You know, now white plays king e3, and the best move is to go back, but, okay, queen c3 check, and now the king goes here, and now bishop e5, we've reached this position. I mean, black is just, this is merciless. Preventing the king from escaping, you gotta snipe the king like this. King is stuck, king has no legal moves, now white just has to lose all the material. I mean, this has been one of the best games I have ever seen a 400 rated player play. And I know what you're thinking, like... You're probably sitting there at home wondering, okay, this is the how to lose a chess playlist by Gotham. First of all, like, 0.5% of you who have maybe never seen this are going, why is he so mean to the 400s? Like, this is such elitism. I'm never going to play chess because he's so mean. And to you, I would say you're really sensitive. Relax. This is all sarcastic. The whole experience of playing chess, regardless of your level, is pain. Chess is pain. So is beauty. All right? So it, we're just all in this together. We, you got to laugh at yourself first, and then you got to laugh at others. Anyway, you're probably sitting there wondering, something's going to happen in this game. Maybe, maybe not. Queen takes c2. Removing the defense of the knight. What a, what a move, by the way. I mean, seriously, what a move. And, you know, at this point, white should just trade the pieces and lose. But instead, white goes here. Now, this type of chess where you run your king to the other side of the board just in case something happens, I actually have a concept on this channel, and, I, and I've said this, long-time viewers of my channel know this, it, especially the lower your elo is, if in the middle of a losing position, you just literally run your king to the other side of the board, you literally might win the game. Not because the king promotes, not because it's connect four, but because the king could randomly join in an attack. But that is not even remotely possible here because the king is on a light square, the pawn is just stuck, and the bishop can't touch the king, so it's hopeless. <laughs> but why, you know, why does, yeah, and, and rookie eight check, and king f5, and I, and I know you're, that looks really, really good, except black just keeps checking. And by the way, here there was crazy discovery. You know, you could have double-checked, and you could have traded rooks, and queen c5 check. Okay, excellent. Black is making, uh, you know, and king f6, we made it! That's exactly the, it's exactly what you're supposed to do. 
here's the problem. You know, this looks like checkmate. It's not. It's just here. I mean, there, there is literally absolutely nothing here. And now there's rookie six check, which Black thought was mate. Black did the thing where they make the move and they go, and they're waiting for the on chess.com. Didn't happen. Instead, we have rook takes c6. The good news is you just take back. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, rook d1, rook e8. No, the bishop still covers. It's not, no. No, there's no plot twist in this game. This is just, this is it. Pawn takes e6. And um, white forgets about this and loses the rook. And, and now, now, yeah, that's it. I mean, the last hope is that you could have maybe played f4, f5, f6, f7 with the bishop here. You'd need to really bribe black to get that to happen. King f6. Again, you're trying, but it's now mate in two. And that is exactly how you do it. King to e7. Queen e5 is mate. Queen takes bishop is mate. Like, you could mate by accident here. By accident. You could just take the bishop and... and oh, it's checkmate. Because I, I didn't even... And, you know, black knows the golden rule. And the golden rule in chess is, if you have a checkmate in, in one, che checkmate in two is better. It's a joke. It's tongue-in-cheek. So they play rook d7, king to e8, and now uh, there is a mate in one essentially everywhere. Any rook move is mate. Literally, the entire row of rook moves is checkmate. Queen e5 is mate in two. Queen d5, queen f7 is unstoppable mate in two. Queen c6, queen g6, or here, or here, or here, or here, or here, and there, and then there, and then there, and then there, and 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 there, and they are all mates. But the one move I did not mention that is also checkmate is queen to f8, thinking it's mate. White takes, makes a queen, and wins the game by checkmate themselves.